Thank you. And so next up, we have Jason Kunkel from CAD Microsystems. He's going to be showing the BIM interoperability tools. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, I got kudos to saying it correctly the first time. <laughs> I have to pause it every syllable when I do it myself. It's a, it's a tough one and spelling is even worse. Um, so yeah, thanks. We'll talk about the um, tools in general, specifically we're going to spend some time in the model checker um, for Revit. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. I've got a quick PowerPoint to go over, um, just mostly to keep me on track. And I'll hop in Revit for just a second or two. So let me remember how to use Zoom. And hopefully everybody can see the um, slide deck at this point. I've got a thumbs up. Awesome. So <clears throat> with that, um, model checker for Revit. Uh, real quick background. It is an Autodesk Revit add-in. It is part of the BIM interoperability tools. Uh, the BIM, interoper see? BIM interoperability tools are the um, Kobe extension. It's the model checker. It is the standardized data tool, which is the renamed classification manager if you're used to that. And then there's the equipment data tool and the spatial data tool. So in terms of kind of the workflow of like organizing data, validating data and exporting data, the model checker is in the middle there with that whole validation uh, of data portion. It, it, it runs in Revit, it runs on an active model, it runs, runs on link models, you can select a bunch of models, um, you can validate your elements properties in there, uh, it has exportable reports for Excel and HTML, we'll do another little callback to Power BI in a couple of slides. Um, what, it, what it does at its core is it collects elements based on criteria, and then depending on your check, it'll either give you a list of those elements, the number of those elements, and it can even uh, be very judgmental. And it can say, well, I found some, you have failed this check. Or I didn't find some, you have failed this check. Or vice versa, I found some, you passed. Um, and then that way. So you can go uh, very judgy and do pass fail, or you can just make it more informative and have a count and list or a count of it as well. Um, like I said, it, it, it likes to grab elements. And it likes to kind of quantify them based on the parameters and the information within those parameters. And that hopefully I can, I can make it a little more clear as we're going through. What it is not, I like to point this out specifically. Um, for the most part, it is not going to check relationships between elements. There's a little bit in there where you can drill into host elements and look at parameters of those compared to the element itself. But this is not a design checker. This is not looking for clearances. This is not going to make sure all your hallways are you know eight feet wide. Um, it's not going to make sure every room that's called office has the proper number of egresses. This is going to look at my door and it's going to look at stuff in that door. It's going to look at my room. It's going to look at stuff in my room. It's going to look at my views and it can look at the properties and parameters within the views as well. So we think about the model and the model elements, but there are ways to check annotation standards as well, um, simply because everything in Revit, you know, is structured as family type instance with parameters in there also. Some of the typical checks we start off with are things like, does my equipment or my room have the right parameters associated with it? Uh, are those parameters filled in? The value in those filled in parameters, do they match certain requirements, certain format, or are they matching the list of predefined values? Uh, we can check naming conventions. There are a series of checks in there, more model fidelity items like warnings, links, duplicated elements, in-place families, and things like that. So overall, it, it really is about validating standards, whether those are um, BIM and data deliverable standards, or just kind of your own firm standards about how you want Revit to be used. It's good, close, uh, dearest friend is the model checker configurator. It is a standalone executable. It installs with the interoperability tools. It can be launched from Revit, or you can go track down the EXE in the install folder and drag a shortcut to your desktop if you want. Uh, but this is where the checks are actually made. And there's three ways checks are made. There are some pre-built checks, and I'll show where those are. There is a wizard, and I think the wizard is a great way to start getting used to the model checker. The wizard is going to get your checks probably about 80% of the way there. They always need a little bit of tweaking, um, but it, it's supposed to just walk you through. You know, I'm looking at walls. I want to look at height of walls. If my walls are too tall, I want it to fail. That's the kind of thing the wizard's going to slip you through. And then it's going to give you what we call an advanced check. And you can go in and kind of tweak and nudge there. Or once you get used to it, once you keep, kind of know how it's structured, you can go straight to the advanced editor and make your own individual checks through the advanced editor as well. 
Uh, wild cards are supported through regular expression, so that's fun to learn. Um, but when you're done with that, basically you get a uh, check set file. It's an XML file. Uh, it, it's completely open in all your favorite notepad or text editors. And that was that was by design. So if you need to go make like a batch, huge change to everything, like you just rename your parameter, instead of opening up all your 30 checks in the configurator, open up new notepad, do a find replace. Um, we will sometimes make like one standard check to make sure it works like with one category. And then we'll maybe like take the pieces and parts, put it in Excel, and then we'll make a bunch of checks, you know, in Excel there and then copy and paste them back right into the uh, XML file. The last thing I like to talk about, this is not part of the um, set, but I always like to give a shout out to the Revit lookup tool. Um, if you are going to start making complicated uh, checks, this, this is just, I can't live without it. You know, this is how you look under the hood of the Revit database. Because sometimes you think you know how the parameter is formatted, how Revit wants to have the, handle the parameter. The Revit database, uh, it can surprise you uh, when you're least expecting it to surprise you. And the lookup tool does a great job saying, no, no, this is the name of the parameter, or maybe this is the built-in parameter name that we're looking for, or this is the data type, and this is how the database stores it. And the configurator and the, the model checker prefer to speak on Revit's terms more than the UI terms when things get complicated. All right, here's my reminder slide to start the demo. So uh, Dan, man, we're working on the same project. Uh, it's amazing. It's, it's so, so cool. Every um, single one of my YouTube videos are in this. <laughs> so we're right there with you guys. <laughs> fantastic. Beautiful. Uh, so here's the um, interop BIM interoperability tools tab. You can grab this from the desktop app for manage.audios.com. Here are all the tools that get installed with it. This is the little model checker chunk here. And um, to set it up, you have say set up. Uh, what I'm doing now is I'm associating a check set with this model and I'm turning on and off different checks that I want to run. So these are kind of the last ones I use. I can hit my browse button to go get a check set I made. Down here is what we call the public library. This is all web hosted. These are all publicly available. You can use these, you can download them, you can dissect them, whatever you want. Uh, but I'm going to grab the 2023 best practices, say okay. This is the structure. So these are all the different sections and groupings of checks that we run. <clears throat> Excuse me. If I want, I can just turn off a whole slew, right? I don't, I don't care about my external files now. So I'm just gonna turn off that. None of those checks are gonna run. If I wanna get more granular, I can click on the section and then I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna turn off some of these individuals. Like uh, I'm gonna turn off loadable families because that check takes a long time. And I, I don't wanna waste our time on the call here. Uh, I'm going to come down here to model elements also, and I'm going to turn off duplicate modeled elements. That takes a long time as well. I think mirrored does too. So just to speed things up, uh, turn off some of these, these uh, checks. When I'm done, I say save and close. That doesn't run the model checker. Again, that, all that does is tell this model, these are the checks I want to run from this check set. When I'm ready to roll, I hit my run button. I can add more models. I can select links if I want. I'm just going to say report, run report. Cross my finger that it is going to be pretty fast. And there you go. We ran um, 97 checks in, I mean, that was 15-ish seconds or something. I mean, if you, if you compare the time that you could spend manually going through that and validating all that information, it's, it's, it's night and day, of course. Uh, but we get a little uh, pass-fail here, 60%, sad red. There's no way to adjust that. We just kind of picked some numbers, which sounded good. Uh, try not to take it personally. <clears throat> but I can expand these and I can get all of the different information. You can see this is just a, the, you know, kind of a list information. So here's how big my model is. Here's how many warnings I have in here. We did not run that loadable families check. So that's why that's got the little Ghostbuster symbol. Um, let me come down here. We failed on levels and grids somewhere. Uh, my levels and grids are on the wrong work set. This is not a work shared model. So I probably shouldn't have run that check. That's kind of a false. Negative. I don't, I'm not sure I'll stick. Is that right? False, false, negative, positive, whatever. Um, but we get a little summary of our reports. So we get our check. I can export this to Excel from right here. I can export to HTML. But if I'm running it through Revit and if I find one that I can use properly, yeah, there you go. 
if I'm referring to an instance, I can just click on the little magnifying glass here and it's going to do the whole, can't find a view, let me find a view. It's going to take me to that element and I can just immediately run that and, and fix it up from here. Um, I can drag this over the other monitor, keep working on it over there if I need to. Let me cancel that puppy. And there's that. Say close, make some changes, make some updates to my model, run the report again. And the latest report is always accessible here in view report. So this is saved in the model. That configuration is saved in the model. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so whoever opens up this specific model is going to see it. It's cousin, just really quick, um, just two minutes here in the model checker. This is what this looks like. You don't have to have Revit open to use it. Uh, it will run by itself. It doesn't know Revit versioning. So, you know, make sure you write your check specifically for whatever version of Revit you're in. That's basically around categories. Some categories don't exist across the board. But working down uh, at the bottom, here's where I build that structure. I can make headings, I can make subsections, and this is where I can kind of turn off groups of checks. We see most folks break this up by like uh, discipline or maybe phase. Um, after that, these are the pre-built checks. And this is basically, we, we have very little customization on here. You can see we have a list of object styles, uh, length of CAD elements. This is where I can get the file size information is here as well. You take a couple API steps to collect and organize the data. Next one up is my wizard. So you can see we've got some just questions here. It's going to fail if it finds this. It's going to fail if it doesn't. It's going to fail if it finds this. I'm looking for model elements. I want to look for textural elements. I want it to check for walls and maybe doors. And we say continue. I want to add filters. So this is how this walks it through. And then when it's done, it's going to bring me up and give me a check here in the advanced check builder. And then this is where I can go and just kind of manually go in and tweak or build it from scratch if I want to. Give it a name, give it a description. Um, and then I will add a series of filters, which really takes the entire model and drills it down until it finds the elements that match this criteria that I'm building. And either, again, it lists, or it says those are bad, you're failing, or those are good, you pass. <clears throat> um, we could spend gobs of time on here. This is, you can get really in the weeds here, but obviously the configurator, you know, this is for just a handful of people at your, your firm. They're going to be experts on the configurator. They make the checks. They send it out to everybody else and go from there. And I won't see my changes. All right, real quick, back to wrapping up this part. My uh, wake up, et cetera. I had to look up how to spell that. I would not have guessed that's how you spelled it, but right? you don't come to me for spelling. So. I Because I, I just did ETC period. I'm like, that's not to look good. Totally. So I had to look it up. Um, anyway. Uh, dashboards. Dan uh, talked about dashboards just a second ago. Um, this is a great way to kind of get different types of information organized in a different way. You know, we can't get the same kind of relationship data that, that Dan was building. So a combo of the two, I think would be awesome in the same dashboard. Um, and you can make those references and those connections. When I export to Excel, it knows its element ID. Um, it can know its category. So it knows a lot of that Revit stuff in Excel. But these are sample dashboards that are available on the interoperability tools website. You can just grab, uh, kick around. You know, these are just starter ones to kind of let people play around with, but it is a great way to kind of get consistent visual reports out of stuff. <clears throat> these are some of the wacky, wackier sample checks. You know, I don't just think it's about are all of my walls three feet tall or higher. You know, we're looking for things, are there crop boundaries and all of my elevation views? Are all my DW links set, set to current view only? You know, those are still parameters in elements in Revit. So the model checker loves to check that kind of thing. I could see this being great to make sure that certain company standards are being met in, in terms of content, right? Yeah. Like that you're actually using your content in the way that we anticipate and not bringing stuff in from like Revit City. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, uh, you know, and if it's making sure all your parameters are attached to the right categories, things like that. Um, you know, it's not just about making sure the data is pass off correctly to the owners. It's about that internal stuff too. <clears throat> We've got a public library. These are all check sets that are available. Like I said, you can go, you can download them through the configurator. You can open a notepad, you can open and tweak them, do whatever you want with them. Um, most of these, uh, we the, the CAD team made, but we made them, especially if you can see, you know, if there's other organizations involved, we made them with those groups. We reached out to them, asked their permission. Um, some toys they asked us. 
And then we reviewed their BIM standards and then we built these check sets. So they, they align with what they want and they need. Uh, so a few much, questions for you. Oh yeah. And one that I had also, and maybe you're going to get to, is this something that you can automate? Hey, look. <laughs> Scripting. All right. Beautiful. <laughs> that was perfect. Um, there is an API. So if you want to build your own you know, application to Visual Studio, you can call it. There is scripting functionality too, which um, a, a real quick, what it does is basically you just take a, take a text file and you kind of write little shortcut commands. You stick that in a certain place and then you tell Windows, um, uh, the, the, the alarm, not the alarm thing, the, the task thing. You tell Windows like 1 a.m. open Revit. If Revit has the model checker installed, it will first look to that one location for that text file. If it finds that text file, it's going to open that, that model, open that check set, export your checks, close the model. Open the next model, run your checks, export the check set, close your model. So you can script all that up. So any thoughts on maybe like the future of having this as a cloud-based solution where you could have the dashboards and things like that all accessible? Okay, so awesome question. Um, I, I don't, I never know what I can share what I can't share when we're, <laughs> we work with AutoCAD or we work with Autodesk directly. Totally get it. There is- <laughs> Do not make any buying decisions. Safe, right. safe harbor. Yes, yes. So Thank you, Dan. <laughs> don't buy your stocks on that. Um, <laughs> Do not make any buying decisions based off of what Jason Kurt says in the rest of his presentation. Yeah. Um, the Even though it's free. The, the cloud version <laughs> exists. There is a cloud version. It is currently in limited release. Um, kind of an invite only thing. Um, if you want to do some Autodesk University searching, you may find some folks talking about it over the last couple of years. Uh, one of those guys might be this guy. Um, if you want to look for my name. Um, but it does exist. We're very excited about it. it. It will go and it works with your, you know, BIMC at 360, your ACC models, same check set, same engine, same exports, just way easier to kind of script and, you know, schedule along the way. So we're hoping it'll be kind of made available this year, but yeah, do not go and uh, change your 401k portfolio based on this information at all. So. Uh, last slide I got, here's some um, resources. So interoperability.autodesk.com. And the link is in the mural, of course. Awesome sauce. Uh, those Power BI samples, some other samples you can download there. There are links to the AKN pages. There's links to YouTube there, but we do have an AKN section. If you go to YouTube and search for BIM interoperability tools, we have a channel with uh, videos on this one and all other ones. I'd like to put regex101.com down there. If you're building regular expressions, that's where I always go. Uh, and then every so often our team blogs about some of the kind of wackadoodle ones we're making for uh, for the model checker or our own blog there. So really, yeah. really cool stuff. Tons of questions coming in. Um, one last one. Do you see clients starting to require this stuff? Whether that's, you know, large campus Yep. style projects or, you know, I would see it probably with, you know, multi-building type of campuses. That would yep. be really beneficial. Definitely. So, um, you know, a lot of these clients here, um, you know, OSU has been working, we've worked with them for, for years and years and years. I'm not sure how much they they required as much as they, they strongly recommend it um, when they send things out. Um, you know, State of Tennessee has written it into there. That is not supposed to be 81M. Maybe it is 81M. It feels like it should be BIM but they've written to their standards as well. Um, and certainly whenever we build them documents, we have the, the conversations with them uh, to build the standards and, and have them sending them out to. Well, fantastic. And please make sure if nothing else that you guys go on there, I'm sure you can find tons of chats that Jason has done and in, in much more depth if you're you know, particularly interested in one of the tools, maybe try to get some of those links on the mural if we can. 